Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and basically just talk about the things we found interesting going on in the world of open source, Linux, Floss, Penguins, all that fun stuff. I'm Vince Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and all the way over there, by himself, forever alone, <laughs> that's Pedro Mateus. You know, despite Aww. living with Nori, but whatever, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going by what she tells me, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aww. we got a gang of stuff to talk about this week. Um, what's everyone been up to? Jill, you're like uh, keeping oh, track yeah. of dates or something. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> wow, I've done a year now, 52 weeks of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Um, OMG. So tomorrow, March 28th, 20, 2018, uh, uh, Wednesday, March 28th, 2018 was my first show as a full-time co-host. And what a ride it's been. <laughs> and we're talk we were talking about scale 16x then so now today it'll be scale 17x <laughs> awesome <laughs> right <on>. yay <laughs> but it's really been wonderful uh, this has just been so awesome and i love it <laughs> speaking of scale i've been going through those videos i finally got a chance to get all that downloaded and i'm deciphering things like mov1 mov2 mov3 <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Where I have no idea what's in them, who's in them, but we'll, yes. we'll see if we can get that together. <laughs> and, um, oh, one thing. Mm -hmm. We're giving away a copy of uh, Humble Bundle 20 from last week. That's the full mm -hmm. paid version with the uh, overgrowth in it. Go back and check that show out. It's pretty easy to enter. Pedro, you never write anything in, so what's going on? Nope. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> not much. Uh, it's... Uh, the basically the slow days at work have been uh coming to an end because yeah most people have now used all of the days off that they had left before they uh like financial year rolled over and they wouldn't get to keep those days mm -hmm. so it's actually been a bit busier now it's it's good <laughs> although we were enjoying just you know watching youtube videos oh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Yay. come to the end. All right. Yeah. How about we get right into this? Because this, this is kind of a fun discussion. Um, everyone's favorite, oh, yes. favorite um, bearded loss advocate, Chaos mm -hmm. Allman. Yes. Yes. So, uh, mm -hmm. yes. Um, Richard Stallman, mm -hmm. you may love him, you may hate him, but uh, what he often does is he makes some really interesting articles, if nothing else, and this latest one is no exception. It was uh, published for Libra Planet on March 23rd slash 24th, and basically uh, he... <laughs> <laughs> Besides picking uh, stuff from his feet and then eating it, uh, he decided to introduce a novel <laughs> idea to the install fest. This whole thing is about the install fests and what to do about the deal with the devil. And the devil in this case is in uh, Stallman's... Uh, suggestion here uh very much a literal person that's dressed like a devil and offers to install non-free software in an install fest so in his idea the perfect install fest would not compromise anyone's privacy by including um proprietary software or blobs of any kind you would only be allowed to install um completely free and open source um operating systems and then if you wanted more then you could go to the devil and the devil would um mm. install that proprietary software for you and the mental gymnastics that he goes through to at the same time incentivize <laughs> a demon or a devil to be present to do these things but just refusing to admit the reasons as to why that would be a necessity it's impressive, and as much as I could have, you know, we could have a truly free world in the world of software and hardware, mm -hmm. we don't. <laughs> I mean, efforts are being made, but we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, having hosted several Linux Chick-fil-A install fests, I understand the dilemma of non-free software and proprietary hardware driver installs. And in fact, we even have suggested that people bring their old laptops or newer laptops with them, which 
Mm -hmm. usually use an AMD APU or Intel GPU and can use the open, open source, <laughs> open source <laughs> graphics drivers. <laughs> and, but at the same time, as an animation teacher, though, and having many of my students learning Linux at our Linux Chixelle install office, I have often, um, I often have them install proprietary animation apps like Maya, Moto, DaVinci, et cetera, to teach my students the industry standard apps they will encounter, of course. <laughs> But of course, also teach my students to use the open source and non-industry standard and now industry Blender, Krita, Inkscape, and GIMP and the many advantages that open source software has over proprietary and it is superior in so many ways. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, with me, operating systems, I love Stallman. I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's yeah. a necessary evil, he says non-ironically. Um, <laughs> But I do treat operating systems as tools, not religions. Yeah. I, I can't really do that. I mean, when it comes to <laughs> hardware and software, I'm flexible. I would like this utopia, this perfect world where Libra boot and everything, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know mm -hmm. if we'll ever get back to that. And, you know, and I will always flavor uh, floss over pr proprietary, 100%, but it does boil down to using the right tools for the job to kind of touch on what you have to get done. And sometimes I'm more than willing to shoot myself in the foot to accomplish this, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I have a license for Traction, which is a DAW <laughs> digital audio workstation, but I use Audur because it's good enough and it gets the job done. And mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. Uh, when it comes to video editing, even yesterday I was playing with it, more on this at 11 later in the show, DaVinci Resolve yeah. would make better use of the hardware I currently have. But you know what, Katie and Live, you get the job done. So I'm going to use that. Yeah, and uh, like you mentioned, uh, Libra uh, Libra Boot, uh, it's a very good idea. It's like completely open sourcing that last bit of blob that's in every single computer, which is the UEFI. So you get rid of that, and everything is saucy. But most of those efforts seem to be focused on older hardware. Case in point... Seven new devices have been certified by the Free Software Foundation. And what are they? Well, they're basically uh, network adapters. Yeah, they're all network adapters. And mm -hmm. they are wired ones that do 10 and 100 megabit per second. They're either USB or PCIe. And there's a couple of wireless G adapters as well. G. You don't get AC, you don't get gigabit, you don't get anything. <laughs> it, it's not that they're old, necessarily, because they're not. It's just antiquated technology that now, nowadays, it's actually feasible to completely use these in an open platform. No blobs of any description, all the drivers, everything else. It's all free software. And that's great. But it's... Old. <laughs> yeah. <Come on. laughs> yeah. Well, this is awesome because, yes, it, it is Richard Stallman approved hardware, of course, which is wonderful. And what was really cool is Think Penguin had some of these devices on display at the booth at scale seven at their booth at scale 17X. And I spotted the wireless and uh, in, in dual band PCIe card, as well as the Penguin Wireless G USB adapter. So that was really cool. I didn't have a chance to go over and um, uh, play with them, but um, I did see them when I was passing by when I was doing interviews. <laughs> so that was really cool. And they're always at scale every year um, showing off their new hardware. So uh, kudos to Think Penguin. Awesome. And these are not the first devices from Think Penguin to receive the Correct. RYF certification. <laughs> However, you know what, Pedro? I, there's a critical design flaw in all of the um, devices. Uh, there's no GNU. <laughs> no RGB, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I true God, that. you went there. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> we, we need more open source splink. <laughs> oh. I said that totally for comedic effect. It hurt yes. me as much as it hurt all of you. <laughs> uh, you went there. Up next, yes. OpenShot 244 has been released with keyframe scaling, docking, and more! Exclamation point. Um, you can download and test the app image. It's easy. I like it. It works for once. Uh, didn't encounter any issues with it. 
quite mm-hmm. happy with it. You've never heard of OpenShot. Uh, it's a nonlinear video editor, and it has gone through some growing pains uh, as of late. However, um, it worked with the scale videos that mm-hmm. uh, Jill sent over and from Alan, Jill, and everyone. Performance uh, stability improvements, a um, couple of bug fixes, lots of polish, and a lot of new features. So it's there. I've kind yeah. of moved on. A couple of things, the keyframe scaling, improved SVG rendering, improved docking mm-hmm. contracts, improved Windows <laughs> installer. That's a thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Hindi, Arabic, and Chinese. Okay. Neat. Um, yeah. Good. Good work. Question mark. Yes. <laughs> yeah well it, yeah this release has lots of updates which which as as you just saw um a lot of really uh, uh crucial ones too and one that i really love is it now OpenShot now includes the ability to use user-defined export presets for rendering via config text file that launches on startup thank you so much <laughs> that's that's something i've always wanted from OpenShot. And there used to be a bad waveform bug that has finally been fixed. Now, when you split a clip in the timeline, the audio waveform stays intact instead of disappearing. Yeah, you know, the audio would play, but the but the uh, audio waveform would uh, disappear in the mm. timeline. Very annoying. <laughs> and um, yes, yeah, so there's also a new user community official open shop subreddit now. So they have a, a new location and it's um, the links in the show notes uh, where you can go and and submit bugs or 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 help them out. They they need uh, they're asking re- requesting the community for help with their software. So that's awesome. That's really good. Um, I'm glad the project is still moving forward because it last yes. year and really the year before that it hit a lull. And I was like, yeah. well, is there, are we gonna move yeah. forward? And it's still Is there works. anyone else working on the project or is still just the one dude? <laughs> Glenn, I don't know. Not a hundred percent. Yeah. I think there um, are additional contributors. There are okay. additional compu- <laughs> contributors because I, I have met some of them at scale. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know how much. I know the the one one uh, guy does it full time, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> like the GIMP. I think it's like the GIMP project. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right so let's move from OpenShot to a little bit of news from the lines over at KDN Live Spirit 2019 mm-hmm. in Leiden. They're just talking about a meet yeah. space get together, which is good for projects. I mean, that that can yeah. definitely really help. Um, mm-hmm. Part of their goals were to fix all known blocking bugs from this release. They were going to test and fix new hidden bugs. That always pops up. Decide which features to add after the release. Review the user interface and usability. Usability testing, of course, and testing effects. And attempting to improve render speed, which is always crucial. And they committed 85 yes. fixes <laughs> and implemented some new and old features. Neat. Yep. I use KDN Live. It For a long time, I didn't use KDN Live. Because it crashed and I lost a lot of work that one time. <laughs> and it could yeah. have been any video editor, honestly. But for years, I didn't use KDN Live, just at principle. And we kind of get around to that. One thing I would like to know is, uh, well, I'd like to see eventually. And I was like, but you just fixed all this. So what do you do as a user? Demand more. I know <laughs> what I'm doing. But I would love to see some CUDA acceleration, maybe some NV encode export options so I didn't have to do that manually. Yeah. Because uh, mm-hmm. I, I keep flirting around with buying DaVinci Resolve. It's going to be like $300 for an activation card. Mm-hmm. And I, I try the free version. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this is so good. Because we have some really big, chunky raw video that we're putting together a thread with a ripper system to make that work, among other things. It's not just for that. <laughs> But mm, yeah. Da Vinci mm-hmm. can take use of the he two NVIDIA cards in the system. It's like, oh, oh, oh this is so nice. But then again, I worked really hard to build a 100% open source tool chain for everything we do. And yeah. I want to keep it that way if possible. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah, like you said, getting together in meet space is a very good way to get things done. If nothing else, then just, you know talking some smack with the people that you know uh and yeah they apparently yes yes i do mean (laughs) drinking because 
if you're <laughs> if you set your heads together and you spend a couple of days hammering on bugs and issues and new features and whatnot while hammering down some adult beverages and snacks, yeah. then yeah, <laughs> things tend to get done very, very uh Nicely. <laughs> I wouldn't say quickly, I uh, wouldn't say effectively, but it is a good time. So, yeah, kudos on to the uh, KD and live team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it, ha having these kind of events really helps focus on the one project. And Canonical does this as well. And it, it, it's it, they fix a lot of bugs and do a lot of updates uh, during during that Um uh, meetup and um, other op open source projects like Solus does it, the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So this is a really, really great way to help fix bugs and do updates. And I approve. Do it every year, Caden Live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get everyone shipped to France to just work on things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are moving. I checked out the refactoring branch last week and i think i only ran into one gacha bug so mm -hmm. it's getting better it's definitely getting better mm -hmm. i submitted a bug report over twitter dms to one of the developers because they contacted me and was like fix that um looking forward to it looking forward yep. to it uh nano everyone's favorite favorite text editor Yay! Yay! So Except GNU for Nano. Those people. <laughs> <laughs> GNU Nano turns 4.0. This version is called the Rope of Sands. <laughs> and it has been released with many updates, including the paragraph jumping functions were um, are now moved from search to go to line, which makes more sense actually. <laughs> And when a line continues off screen, it now ends with a highlighted greater than symbol instead of a money sign. And I like that better because visually it, it's easier to read <laughs> at the end of a sentence. So that works well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, the, in version 3.2, it has the uh, little dollar sign. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I can see how it got confusing, and I did see a couple of comments of people saying, yeah, it looks like you're about to call a regular expression, or you're <laughs> declaring a variable, or something like that. It's like, yes. yeah, okay, the dollar sign, maybe not the best idea. You, you're making <laughs> yeah. a case for a nano clippy. A little ask. <laughs> <laughs> that would be evil. Um, it's a solid update for yeah. the program I like to call I borked X. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you borked X, you set up a Aww. Steam box, you have a <laughs> headless server running somewhere, and you just need to edit a couple of config files and yes. give it a kick. So, yeah, Dano just gets that done without you having <laughs> to memorize the Stargate commands to quit out of the damn thing. Get good yeah. scrub. I mean, I started with Pico, <laughs> and I was like, "What's Nano?" I was like, "Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, I know. I know all the key bindings already. I'll just use Nano." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nano there. is simple. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. I wouldn't do anything mm -hmm. complex in it. I know someone's like, "It's perfectly fine." Do you do it? It's like, but XOR config. Trust me. Yeah, I, that's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when I started using <laughs> Nano. <laughs> That it's like my work. machine is boring then i can't vim there <laughs> this Aww. is true um centos eight they're in need oh yes yes <laughs> they are in need of uh, artists and designers and just about anyone with an eye for things artistic graphically speaking uh basically there's a new um Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, 8 beta. And with that, they have decided, you know what? It's time we started working. We need to uh, make sure that CentOS is ready for when version 8 of uh, Red Hat Enterprise comes out. So uh, basically, their previous artwork was all based around the number 7. So if you ever uh, spun up CentOS 7, all the wallpapers had the 7. The <laughs> icons had the 7. Yeah. And yeah. And they are very uh, stringent when it comes to how you can use their current graphics. Like, very stringent. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not looking at the video version, you should be just or just click on the show uh, in the uh, link in the show notes and look at all of the incorrect usage uh, graphics that they have in that post. But yeah. Am I alone Basically, they're by looking... sitting here going, all right, how many of the incorrects can I check at one time before I send this? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, you know, maybe having a fetching theme and really nice looking wallpapers and icons, maybe that'll actually do worse for CentOS because it'll drive the usual type of people who go to CentOS uh, in the first place. They'll drive them away. But I guess if you are using Scent as a desktop OS, chances are you already have a folder with all those wallpapers and themes and yeah. icons <laughs> and a bunch of other amenities to make it a pleasant experience, I guess. And if you want, yeah, if you really want uh, artsy people to come and help you with your project, you're going to have to loosen up on the... Um, control uh -huh. over that logo and text and the incorrect <laughs> usage yeah <laughs> you can l lose that a little bit the yeah. beatings will continue until the art is perfect <laughs> <laughs> until <the> complain <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> i i fully agree pedro and actually i prefer the black and white versions of the logo I actually always have i even have a centos t-shirt as well Today I'm wearing, wearing my IBM shirt from Scale, which of course is now owns Red Hat and CentOS. Um, I actually prefer the black and white versions of logo with the name because visually the logo is too busy with the four colors and detracts from the CentOS name branding. Every time I yeah. look at that logo, my <laughs> eye is drawn to the colors, not to their name. <laughs> and there's a there's like so many lines in the uh, in yeah. the logo. It's like Ex you I don't know it's need those visually, many. <laughs> yeah, it's it's visually distracting. Yeah, and and, and too busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, um, I would like to speak for the vocal minority of our brethren and sisters out there. Going, <laughs> I didn't know they had a logo. Still, <laughs> it's not CentOS. It's like, what's the Ubuntu logo? It's like, pull the trigger. I don't know, man. <laughs> the only reason I know Fedorf has a logo is because Pedro cocked that up. Yeah. <laughs> and the designer on Twitter was like, aha. Done. Yeah, Fedorf. <laughs> Hey, it got a retweet. That's more than many of <laughs> the other suggestions ever made did. Made Pedro's day. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> okay, um, coming up next, uh, Jill, who are we going to, who did you talk to? We're going to cut oh, this Oh, okay. This is our our Scale 17X interview with Chris Cornaccia, Strategic Account Leader at GitLab. So right now I'm here with Chris at one of our favorite businesses in the world, GitLab. A lot of us at Linux Gamecast have accounts with them. And uh, when Microsoft took over GitHub, a lot of us moved over to Hashtag moving to GitLab. Right? <laughs> moving to GitLab. And um, so he's going to talk about some of the new features coming up of GitLab. And as we've mentioned on our show, there's just a lot of wonderful automation tools now for GitLab. And um, I was you know, really amazed that it's it's done all remote it's there's not a single you know building or company yep. that gitlab is based it's all done in the cloud it's all kubernetes and yeah and so we've got and all Docker. Those abilities. and of course we have the ability to do it mm -hmm. behind your firewall too and gitlab people used to know us as a code repo right yeah but we're a single application now for the entire devops life cycle right yes. so end to end everything from issue management to monitoring of your code to ci cd all built mm -hmm. in and when we were talking a little earlier about some of our newest features, oh, yeah. over the past year, we've really been focusing on application security. Security is at the top of everyone's mind because they don't want to be that person, right? They don't want to have the vulnerability. They don't want to have the breach. So how do you secure your applications while going extremely fast at the speed of DevOps? Mm. What we've done is we've started, we've started talking to organizations and we've started developing products around how do you shift security left? Typically, security happens at the end of the life cycle. Somebody runs the vulnerability tests in the security group. Next thing that happens, it's a week, two weeks later, the developers moved on to something else, and they say, it's not my problem anymore, it's your problem. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're saying, well, what if you could scan every line of code at every check-in 
immediately within your CI pipeline and then allow your, de your developer to have the choice to remediate it, to create an issue, come back to it later, or push it down to the security team to take care of later. So imagine having the ability to do that. So what we've done is we've actually built as part of our prop, our part of our product, we've built in static application scanning, dynamic application scanning, amazing, <laughs> open source uh, compliance, open source licensing compliance, container scanning if you're using containers, yeah, as well wow. as dependency <laughs> scanning. All of that happens at every check-in before anything is merged. So you don't even have to put that vulnerability, if there's one there, into a production environment or into a testing environment at all. Oh, wow. Pretty crazy. It's amazing. Pe people are loving it. Yes. Oh, just, just continue the good work that you're doing. Well, thank you. Yeah. And we, we appreciate the community, everybody mm -hmm. who's signing up, using our projects. Yay. As you know, <laughs> one of our taglines is everybody can contribute, right? GitLab is an open source, open core model. Uh, we're stewards of the open source community Yes. <laughs> and 2,000 plus contributors now contributing to our product. So we wouldn't be where we are without the community. Aww. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Jill. Yeah. Appreciate the time. All right. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, thanks, Jill. Thanks, Alan. Oh, we're yay. able to talk to, uh, we, we had a gang of those that uh, we're going to be feeding through in the upcoming weeks. Uh, oh, one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that they stalked at scale. It's kind of fun. We got some yes. gaming stuff too. So <laughs> yes. looking forward <laughs> to that. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, we get to go to scale and stuff like that because of you at home, playing the home game, helping us out. If you get a chance, think about, like, hey, man, I like these weirdos. I'm going to kick them a few shekels every month. You can do that. LinuxEMGAS.com forward slash support. We got the PayPals. We got the Amazon affiliate links. Those are awesome. We get a cut of that. We got a wish zone mm -hmm. where I'm about to spend a chunk of change. Humble PayPal, magic, internet, monies. But our favorite is Patreon. And we have a new Patreon to thank this week, mm -hmm. Joe. <laughs> yes, we do. Belric. Yeah, I've been enjoying him the last week in chat. He's He's our our newest patron. He's awesome. Don't <laughs> Thank worry, Pedro. You so I'll much. put the appropriate music behind that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad it wasn't just me then. <laughs> oh no, I looked over at you. I was like, hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey man. Thanks. Uh, with that, you get to come hang out in our Discord uh -huh. and we're there. You yep. get early access to a lot of stuff. We don't put anything behind a paywall. So that's cool, but it helps keeps the light. It's on no mattress rads and uh oh we have merch t-shirts and uh yes. I, I think those are <laughs> yes kind of store.linuxgamecast.com go there <laughs> really horrible at merchandising um, <laughs> we have a couple of designs and you can have them on stickers shirts hoodies whatever mugs <laughs> We need keychains. No, we don't. No, we don't. Uh, <laughs> keep being awesome, everyone, and thanks again. But now it's time for a slice of pie. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, and, and this is actually one of my favorite pro pie projects of all time. This is uh, using the official Raspberry Pi keyboard to build an all-in-one pie, pie keyboard, and it's battery powered which is really cool so uh they uh you know take apart the keyboard and drill the holes for for the pi for the hdmi ports and for the usb ports and what's really cool about it is i love the fact that you can still use the keyboard with other computers or pies as it uses a usb cable externally to connect the keyboard to the pi so it, yeah, it comes out the back get... end <laughs> if you get one of those really fancy RGB cables, that little loop all of a sudden becomes fabulous. Really? Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. We got to make sure to build one and give one to Ben. Um. <laughs> I need a new planter. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think this is really cool. Also, because of the pie, it's so small, you could put a, you know, a nice external battery in there and 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 have a portable portable uh, uh all in one keyboard computer and i nerd rage computers built in keyboards as well of course i'm a fan girl of the commodore 64s and the amigas mm -hmm. um, but one of my favorite computers in my collection is a 486 all-in-one computer and it has a little uh, floppy dr disk drive in it and it's a small it's it's actually a really small unit <laughs> and it was amazing yep. it was one of the smallest 486s ever made 
and yeah. those really cool. uh, yeah those <laughs> raspberry pi keyboards are actually very slim so yes. i wonder if it'd be possible <laughs> to i don't know Maybe put an A3 plus in it. Yes. <laughs> You've gone yes. too far. Has technology gone too far? <laughs> Stay tuned to our next shock video on YouTube. Aww. Uh, you could do this <laughs> well, and you, like yeah. run maybe a Commodore emulator or a ZX emulator and save yourself exactly. like $300 from buying a retro remake yeah. that probably runs Windows. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't know they had a keyboard. I'm be 100% honest. Oh, like, that's yeah. A that's a neat little device that I yeah. probably see. <laughs> yeah, it's a really yeah. small um it's 10 keyless obviously and the yeah. the key travel is minimal, but yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi keyboard. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Down with that. Maybe you can <laughs> um get hands on with one when you visit the store. <laughs> Yes, I might even buy one because I this uh, thing yeah. gave me an idea. It's like, okay, maybe I can fit something a little bigger in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Up next, hands on. We talked about it last week, but Extreme Tech. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be in our show notes. So they got to play around mm -hmm. with the Jetson Nano. It's kind yeah, of a thing. Nice. Yeah. Turns out the little fella runs Ubuntu. NVIDIA does provide a basic AI tutorial, their Hello AI World program. The demo includes a basic image recognition, but you're going to need to hook up a camera, not included, if you want to get creepy. Mm -hmm. But the Raspi camera works with this, so it's not going to yep. be too hard. It also includes plans for JetBot, which is the open source robot kit. And think of like a little wheeled bot with cameras mm -hmm. that can be remotely driven or programmed. And it can recognize things like orange. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a yeah. Uh, compute module. It is the same form factor that the Raspberry Pi compute module and the Google one that we talked about last week. Uh, that's very same uh, form factor. But this one... It has, it's a quad-core ARM uh, CPU with 128 Maxwell uh, CUDA cores. So it has, like, just off the SOC, it has better specs than the NVIDIA Shield tablet. And granted, you need you need a baseboard or a TV or any kind of device that'll take a compute module uh, to make it work. But it's significant, especially if you consider that a hundred bucks for the uh, current pre-order for the consumer version, uh, which is just the uh, the compute module. Everything else is extra, obviously. But it is a much better uh, deal proposition than the. Google thing Google. we talked about last week. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, a hundred bucks, and you get basically something that can drive an Nvidia Shield tablet, right there. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm digging it. It's also got an M.2. Yeah. yeah, that. Uh, yeah. that. <laughs> but um, the author does point out the first time you run the image recognition, it takes a minute. Mm -hmm. like, it needs to cache everything. It makes sense. Yeah. So much of a minute yeah. that. It's like, oh, it's a bug report. And then is like, no, we're going to update our um, guide on this. It's like, it takes a minute, NVIDIA. <laughs> <laughs> or we yeah. just download, when you install the drivers, we just download all of the cache we already have. There, done. <laughs> it's a fun Tinker Toy. Uh, if you like Tinker Toys, maybe you have one of your own. And it's Linux powered. Do you want to tell us about it? Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear about Yay. it. Um, smoke signals, best way to do it, right? <laughs> yes absolutely smoke signals if you have like those airport guiding lights you can use those too I have but those. if you'd like to <laughs> uh, if you would like to uh, actually get in touch with us well maybe go on uh, go on over to linuxgamecast.com hit the uh, contact button and fill out the form you just have to pick LWDW so that we get that your message is feedback for the show Yes, there are four lights. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, the best way to get in touch with us. Of course, you're, if you're a Patreon, you can also leave us a message on Patreon. Any of those comments, of course, take priority. Uh, if for some reason you'd like to get in touch with us, but you don't want your comment featured, you just have to point out that, yes, that don't mention this on the show. And that's cool. <laughs> okay. And we're not 100% so on that stop. either. I've straight up read now, like reading it for the first time on the show. I was like, don't include this in the show. Oops. Um. <laughs> It'll happen sometimes. But yeah, 
So last week we were talking about, uh, oh, not last week, two weeks ago, we we're talking about uh, Myo Linux. And uh, well, the devs <laughs> got in touch. It's like, wow, thank you for mentioning Myo Linux. I don't know what to say other than thank you. Myo is a personal <laughs> project that has gone beyond what I ever imagined. Thank you so very much. Take care. And I do re- I, I see your thing there, Jill. I'll let you get to yeah. it. But before uh, mm-hmm. that, I do have to say that in that particular spiel, when we talked about Pedro Myo Linux, just said, I'm gonna give you a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you finish. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, I said, why, why use this when you could just use something like Crunchbang? And well, the Crunchbang mm. devs have never personally come to the show and said thank you. So f that. Use my Linux. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, perfect, Pedro. And, and, and yeah, you know, I, I went ahead and installed my Linux on an older laptop. I had run it in a VM originally, but I went ahead and installed it, installed it on an older laptop with the open box window manager and absolutely love it. It is so lightweight, lightweight and zippy. And I love the fact that it's based on Dev One, so free of System D. So it's it's one of my one of my several hundred computers that doesn't have System D on it. It's nice. <laughs> right on, right on. I'm next. Yay! What do we have? Um, a little bit of a Mm-mm. bug report. Because mm-hmm. here I am claiming XFC is infallible. Wow. <laughs> Tolstoy writes. Is, Hi, Ben. I wonder if you can get yeah. the feedback. Uh, XFC bug. I noticed I'm um, installing 1804 that when using Firefox. Now, this is a very detailed, which I, I, I did. I'm good like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, untick the title book, which would get, you know, basically use the built-in uh, Firefox navigation system, which I didn't even know about. And I was like, oh, that's neat. Buttons are in the wrong place. But maximize Firefox. Uh, visit a video site of choice, select a video to play, maximize play full screen during or after video plays, exit video full screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so it reduces mm-hmm. to it's no longer maximized full screen. Uh, I would mm-hmm. expect it to remain. This is apparently a known bug in the XFC window manager, but it's been fixed, but not pushed out to mm-hmm. 1804. Is it or it's, so here's the point. Um, 1810, is it fixed for me? Is it worth abandoning LTS path just to fix this annoyance? Um, it works mm. in 1810. I couldn't reproduce. Mm. No. I don't I know. I have Fedora 29 on the X240, and yes, that is very much an issue. Yeah. Uh, if mm-hmm. you do that and you just use the built-in uh, Firefox one that they introduced with uh, Quantum, in fact, it has more bugs than just that specific one. Uh, there's actually a lot of uh, flickeriness with uh, the lack of... Uh, like XFWM for window decorations or mm, even yeah. other um, window managers, they have issues with the way Firefox handles its own window. But yeah, it uh, it is very much still present in Fedora 29. So it may be that you actually need to pull it down and build it yourself. Mm. You might try installing yeah. <laughs> on Ubuntu. Install Ubuntu desktop. Yeah. This is my recommendation. I know, you know, Popey's going to come haunt me, but it's like step one now. <laughs> now that I know how that works, where it just rips out the uh, canonical stuff. Mm-hmm. Just, it's like, oh, look, it's a normal system now. Yay. Um, try that because that's a different thing than, you know, just install XFCE4. It is. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Might give that a try or... I know. Use Chromium. Yeah. No, Chromium's been doing its own window borders for a long time. (laughs) I'm just saying, if if all you're using this Firefox instance is to watch videos, what a robot it, man. Here, Chromium, what is my purpose? You play video. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know if I solved any problems there. Probably not. Hmm. I, I've seen that issue happen with yeah. uh, XFWM4, Mate, uh, uh-huh. Openbox. So, yeah, it's uh, 
I'm sure there is a specific bug for XFWM4 that they uh, managed to fix, mm -hmm. but everything else still needs fixing. So, uh. mm -hmm. hmm. seems like a thing, man. Uh, I'm not worried yep. about it. It doesn't affect me, and uh, it hurts me <laughs> that it affects everyone else. Uh, oh, do you feel like Strider now? Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, because I wouldn't use that to fix uh, close a bug report. <laughs> Which <Yes. is>. <laughs> <laughs> And on that baguette. <laughs> <laughs> oh. some credits and get out of <laughs> Until it's fixed, you can just use no, Matthew says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. to take a pot shot at Strider because he, before Jill uh, was the uh, full time host, we had Strider on. He was a part of uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will take each and every occasion I can to take a pot shot at him. <laughs> Aww, we love our Matthew, our Strider. <laughs> you speak in the royal sense of we a lot. Uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, we love our producers <sighs> and our executive producers. We love you all. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it's been a year. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> a lot of people and a lot of Patreons. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very yes. much. <laughs> I was going to say patience, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love Bye. you, Chat Realm. <laughs>